Hello everyone, this is Ray Space in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 and this is the stock system, not real solar system as I often play. And I am here to test out Parallax Continued. It just had its 1.0 release. It overhauls all planetary terrain shaders and ground clutter and adds trees. So those trees are from Parallax, even though the terrain is actually my Tampico terrain. Uh, so I've got my, that, that, that part is not Parallax. Uh, the Tampico terrain is not parallax. However, the parallax trees are poking through anyway, so that's nice. And I'm going to fly the SR-71, also my own model. And, well, except for the B9 procedural wing parts. And we are going to fly around and take a look here, and then I'll use other vehicles to explore some of the other planets. So, well, I can't use that throttle. Here we go. I really should use the T-38, it's less trouble. So we see some smaller ground clutter there. I think you can see the little flowers and grass. We gotta be going a little bit fast for the, uh, actually taking a look at those, but... I'll try and keep it modest here. Not much out here. So Parallax Continue does have this UI. It is, I believe, going to be compatible with RSS. Well, not maybe, maybe not RSS Reborn. Maybe RSS Reborn, but there's a sequel to RSS Reborn that's coming up. So um, it should be compatible with that. As far as real solar system itself, I'm not so sure. So the edge of the terrain is over there. I could turn on afterburners, but we really do want to go slow, not fast around here to see the terrain scatter and everything and the quality of it. We see some additional trees here. I'll slow down a bit. So yeah, this is a 1.0 release, I think just today. It promises to have better performance than Parallax did before. Uh, the physical size of the mod is still pretty large. It's like on the order of 4 gig, which is about the same as the old one. But as we go lower and slower, you can sort of see additional kinds of scatter popping up. It's another one of those there. But I have to go pretty low in order to really enjoy that stuff. So certainly for your airplane adventures on Kerbin, this will be great. We'll see what the other planets are like. I also have the volumetric clouds here from Black Wreck. Uh, not the latest version because I didn't keep up with the Patreon. So if you uh, go on Black Rack's Patreon and give, I think it is fly five bucks for the volumetric clouds. Uh, that'll get you the volumetric clouds as they are then. But if you wanted updates, you would have to maintain your patronage on Patreon. Uh, I did not. I just got the one time. So I don't get updates right now. Okay, well, I mean, we, we get basically the same stuff around here. Uh, I was looking for rocks, but I'm not seeing, like, there. there's some rocky patches as far as the ground texture is concerned, but I'm not seeing any rock rocks. So, but tree-wise, you know, there's, like, flight sim levels of trees, that's for sure. So, all right, let's see what other planets look like. I've got here my Tylo Lander, and we are around the moon, but it seems to be the fallback textures for the moon. These are not the good textures for the moon. So, I've got something wrong going on here. There is a planet texture folder. Maybe this is how the moon just looks like? I don't know. It's got especially moon color texture and moon height texture. They're not very high quality though. So I would I think maybe 
maybe people would probably like better quality textures for the moon and maybe for some of the other planets. I didn't really think of Parallax as the best source for those things. Parallax is more for closer to the ground. Uh, no, uh, control from here. Well, this can handle Tylo, it better be able to handle here. Mainly, the moon just looks too light compared to what I want it to be. I wanted a little bit of a darker tint. It just also looks too smooth in a way. But we do see some scatter there. So, one particular location on the moon. Now mind you, I've got pretty good specs. I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM, I've got an RTX 4070, and an i5-12600K for the processor. So... But, but the goal of this particular version of Parallax is to be more accessible, so... Hopefully it is for people. Oh, that's a boulder. Okay, go down, go down, go down. Oh, screw it. Alright, you've seen the scatter. We're aborting. <laughs> there it is. That's a scatter at the moon. Not too sure about the other textures. Alright. I'm not gonna do every possible place, but let's see Minmus. I mean... Lots of people will go to Mimis quite a lot, so... Well, Mimis looks quite a bit different up here. There's some weird, smooth, glinty spots, but... Uh, it looks fancy. It looks fancier than the moon does. Mimis always gets a lot more love, I feel like. People like Mimis much more. All right, well, we see plenty of rocks around. And again, there is a density multiplier here. Oh. It'll pause a few seconds. Yes, it did. Okay. So you can change the density like that, and if I press 1... Oh, some of the rocks disappeared in favor of smaller rocks when I got closer to the surface. Yeah, I don't know about this effect, I had to pop in. Yeah, the pop in isn't so great. But maybe some number tweaking in the settings will help that. Maybe if we increase the range multiplier. But then it creates a lot more stutteriness. The more I increase the range multiplier, it does stop the pop-in. does do that. But it does also increase the stutteriness. That also turns into some critter. So if I do 0.5... Well, now it's really stuttery with 0.5. Maybe it doesn't like fractions. Or decimals, I mean. Or maybe it just doesn't like me changing it. I'll just keep it to 1 for now. That's really what we want to see for now. Fade out start range should also change stuff. I should probably like save the game. I mean restart the game. It's 
probably unhappy with me right now. Okay, alright. I'm going to restart the game. We won't do Minmus again. We, we sort of get the idea at Minmus. We'll go somewhere else. Though, probably a look at the flats might be good. But anyway, we'll move on. Well, here at Duna, that is quite a horizon. I'm not too sure how much of that is Parallax. I mean, Parallax, I don't remember doing that sort of scattering, but maybe it does now. Uh, but yeah, that's that's an atmosphere many plants will be proud of. <laughs> uh, I didn't really picture Duna's atmosphere as that intense, but here we are. All right, let's see what goes on. Uh, let me get it into full daylight before trying to land. Oh, we've got some... There's Eve, Kerbin, and Moho. Wow. They're all, they're all right there. Okay. I've got distant object enhancement, I'm sure. Yep. Got potential dust storms. That's probably the volumetric clouds version of uh, scatter and environmental visual enhancements from Black Rack doing the dust storm stuff. All right, here we come. There are some red rocks, orangey red rocks. The red rocks are, like, way too red compared to everything else, right? I mean, that's a problem. You sort of end up having a where-did-they-come-from problem if they're looking like that. Okay, go down, go down, go down. Oh, no, I've got a lot of horizontal. All right. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe something smashed into Duna and broke into many, many pieces. I don't know what the lore is to explain those rocks, but they look very, very, very out of place. Let's put it that way. The rest of the stuff is what you would expect, though. So here we are. That's Duna. Let's see somewhere else. Let's try Val. I do not have deferred rendering. So that's what Val looks like around here. I should note that I have Astronomer's Visual Pack as well. So what I've got is Astronomer's Visual Pack, the Volumetric Clouds, uh, Parallax, Firefly, of course and whatever requirements there are that go along with those. Okay. Oh, let's not land right on the mountain. Well, your normal set of rock scatter around here. No, there, there's some spikes. There's uh, those kinds of spikes that you get resources from in no man's sky you know you know what i mean uh, those those spikes we've got some of those around here Whoa. uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh turn 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 slow down okay okay stop all right 
sort of landed on Val here. But see those spikes? Now this I don't need. Yeah. If I'm making a video, I don't want to see that happening. I mean, if I'm making a video that's a cinematic, I don't want to see that happening. But yeah, that spike field uh, occasionally happens. A slightly different color might be good for those to break the monotony. I mean, not as different as those Duna Rocks were on Duna, but a slightly different color might be nice. Okay, let's see about Elu. Elu's looking good. Really, only the moon was a bit sus. I wonder what would happen if I just sort of scaled these up a bit. I mean, then you get JNSQ. It is compatible with JNSQ, by the way, the parallax continued. But I'm just curious. What if I did scale all the planets of the Kerbal system up by a factor of 10 to make them Earthish size? Real size. How would they look? This is my question. Would they look okay? Do these effects scale properly? Well, that's a question. But anyway, that's Elu for you. It's got the same sort of scatter as some of the others did. Uh, no icicles though. No icicles here. Alright, so that's not all the places, but that's some of the places. There are some little issues, though maybe some tweaking of this would help. Different numbers might be helpful. But alright, that is Parallax Continued, and I'll continue to play around with it. I want to see how it is in RSS Reborn or the sequel to RSS Reborn, and we'll see how that works out. But for now, let me try and hide the flashy bits. Okay, that's a good distance. For now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.